The Children's Bible, Acts 27 and 28, Paul's Journey to Rome. When it was decided that Paul should sail to Italy, they delivered him and certain other prisoners to one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus's forces. Boarding a ship of Adramitim, they launched forth, meaning to sail along the coast of Asia. The next day they touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously gave Paul liberty to go to his friends to refresh himself. When they left there, they sailed along the coast of Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. They came to Myra, a city of Lycia, where the centurion found a ship from Alexandria sailing to Italy, and he put his prisoners on it. When they had sailed slowly many days without favorable winds, they came to a place which was called the Fair Havens, near the city of Lycia. Much time had passed, and seafaring was now dangerous, for the winter had nearly come. Paul warned them, Sirs, I foresee that this voyage will bring damage and loss not only of the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the captain and the owner of the ship more than Paul and because the harbor was not well suited to winter in, most people advised departure in order, if it were at all possible, to reach Phoenix, which is our harbor of Crete, and winter there. When the south wind blew softly, thinking that they could reach their goal, they untied and set sail close to Crete. But very soon there arose a mighty gale. The ship was caught and could not face into the wind, so they let it run before it and running behind a small island called Clotta, they had much work in making fast the ship's boat. When the boat had been taken up, they ran ropes under the ship to secure it. Then, fearing that they might run into the sand, they struck the sails and let the ship drift. Being greatly tossed about by the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the, day, and the following day, with their own hands, they threw out the ship's tackle. But when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the great storm still raged, all hope of being saved was given up. But after going without food for a long time, Paul stood up in the midst of them and says, said, Sirs, you should, not, you should have listened to me, and should not have loosed from Crete. But now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but only the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God has put under your protection all them that sail with you. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. However, we must be cast upon a certain island. When the fourteenth night had come, about midnight, the men of the ship felt that they were drawing near to land. They took soundings, and then cast four anchors off the stern. When they had let down the boat, about to flee the ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut the ropes of the boat and let her drift away. When the day was coming on, Paul asked them all to take food, saying, this is the fourteenth day that you have taken nothing, therefore I pray you to eat, for this is for your health. Not a hair shall fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all of good cheer, and they also took some food. And they were in all two hundred and seventy-six souls on the ship. When they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, casting out the cargo of wheat into the sea. And when it was day, the land was unknown to them, but they saw a creek with a beach, where they planned, if it were possible, to run the ship ashore. So they took up the anchors, loosed the rudder, and hoisted the mainsail to the wind, and committing themselves to the sea, made toward shore. And falling into a shoal, they ran the ship aground. The forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable but the after part was broken with the violence of the waves. Now the soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should have swum out and escape. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, 
kept them from their plan, and commanded that those who could swim should cast themselves first into the sea, and get to land. Then the rest should follow, some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the ship. And it came to pass that they all escaped safe to land. After their escape, they found that the island was called Malta. The natives there showed them much kindness, for they kindled a fire and welcomed them all to it, because of the rain and the cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat, heat and fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the poisonous beast hanging from his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom justice will not permit to live, although he has escaped the sea. But Paul shook the beast off into the fire, and felt no harm. They looked for him to swell or fall down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and saw, said that he was a god. Now in the same area were the lands of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius. He welcomed Paul and lodged him courteously for three days. The father of Publius lay sick with a fever and a flow of blood, and Paul prayed and healed him. So when this was done, others on the island, which had diseases, came and were healed. They heaped honors on Paul, and when he departed, they gave him all he needed. After three months he left in a ship from Alexandria, which had wintered at the island. He went to Syracuse, to Regium, to Putoni, and so on to Rome.